There's some animals that I think everyone knows to stay away from. Snakes, spiders, a great white shark, a jellyfish, probably a gorilla. I feel like universally as a species, these are guys we know to stay away from. Only those who are specially trained or have a special interest in those animals are gonna be the people going near them. But there are some animals that are equally, if not more dangerous than those animals that a lot of people feel very comfortable approaching in the wild. And in certain cases, they feel comfortable goofing around with these animals. Let's have a look at how that can turn out. I'm Todd Boyer, and today we are going on safari around the world, looking at people who made stupid decisions and got a little too close to animals that they shouldn't have. We're going to be going vaguely in a size order. We're going to start with the smallest animal that I've got, and we're going to end in the largest. And to do my part for society, we're going to go a little more in depth into each animal. We're going to be talking about them, why they're dangerous, and what you should do if you see one in the wild. I'm no animal expert, I just like them, so if you've got any extra insights into any of the animals we talk about today, feel free to leave a comment. But before we go too deep into this, I want to clarify that sometimes you don't have a choice to interact with a wild animal. Sometimes the animal interacts with you. Maybe you're snowboarding in Japan and a boar runs out of the forest and attacks you. Judging from this video alone, it doesn't look like the animal itself was provoked. It just seems to be a rude dude with attitude. As we'll talk about later, pigs of all shapes and sizes can be extremely dangerous. But if you read some of the comments of this video, a lot of people seem pretty blind to the actual dangers that these people were in. Or alternatively, we could look at Neil the seal. Neil is a young elephant seal who has taken over a town in Tasmania. I don't believe he's ever hurt anyone, but he has destroyed a lot of government property. That's pretty epic. The people in this town don't have a choice. The seal has just taken up residence here. But obviously, people take precautions. You know, they keep their distance. Get too close. Yeah. Move the wheelchair. Move the wheelchair. Yeah, don't get too close. Jesus, guys. He's a wild mammal. But again, if you look at a lot of the comments on these videos, there's a lot of people here who don't understand that you can't just walk up and give this dude a belly rub. And mostly that's what we're going to be looking at today. People who've tried to act on these impulses. People who had a choice to interact with these animals and they chose wrong. In these videos, people are varying the grease of goofballs. Some a lot more than others. Not all of them hold the same energy. Later on, things get a little more problematic. But for the most part, we're looking at people who don't know what the hell they're doing. Except for one example that we're going to be talking about. These are not Coyote Peterson or Steve Irwin types who know about the dangers they're getting into. These are people who are clueless. They got no bloody idea what they're doing, but I do want to clarify that I, as far as I've looked into this, no one in this video got seriously hurt. As I've said, I love animals, but I think it's super important to know the dangers of certain situations that you put yourself in when you've got to keep a safe distance from animals for your safety and theirs. You should always hold caution for something when you don't know what it is. I live in Australia. I love camping and hiking. I used to scuba dive when I was younger with the sharks and fishes. So I'm not saying in this video that we need to live indoors and hide in fear. That when you see a wild animal, you got to bolt in the other direction. That's not what I'm saying. Just don't be stupid. Don't don't eat pills off the nightclub floor and don't touch a guy that you don't know. Now, why specifically do people do this? Why do people interact with animals that they don't understand? Well, the first of these reasons I think has to do uh, with social media. I don't know about y'all, but whenever I open up TikTok or YouTube, I am bombarded by animal-based content, specifically people who own exotic animals as pets. Maybe that's just my algorithm because I love me an animal. But seeing animals in this form can normalize them for people. It gives a very sanitized image of what caring for these animals is actually like. People start seeing what would be a dangerous animal as a domesticated pet. It also makes people ignore very specific warning signs and have a different perception of what certain animals are like. Obviously, there's good ways to make content based around animals. Personally, I really love the Urban Rescue Ranch. It's a really honest and accurate representation of what caring for non-domesticated animals is like. It's just really honest content and it's content that I admire. Now, obviously, content showing unrealistic expectations for animals isn't a new thing. Obviously, it's more prevalent with social media, but if you look at old film and television shows, with these animals, you see snippets of highly trained individuals. Going back to wild animals, another issue that a lot of people have is trying to get the perfect shot of an animal to create, you know, a lasting memory. Something that I've gotten a little blinded to as well. But in short, you know, this has always been a thing. Some people are just silly and they make quick assumptions, but just have no idea of the potential danger. No hate to anyone in any of these clips. I'm hoping we can look at this from an educational standpoint. And as we'll see, for the most part, I think a lot of the people involved have definitely learnt their lesson. Definitely not not all of them though. Definitely, definitely some of them feel like they're gonna do this again. So let's begin with our smallest animal. Now, this is our only example of the day of someone who knew exactly the risks and dangers involved with interacting with this creature, but did it anyway. Guys, by the way, never try this. This is incredibly dangerous, even for a professional, but I'm gonna show you guys exactly how this works. Okay, 
Put my hand in. Now, they, they chill. It was, in fact, not chill. Uh, so what are these things and who the hell is this guy? This is Julian Obeyed on TikTok. He's an Australian creator and he, he specializes in coastal species. And a lot of his content revolves around this animal, which is called a... Glaucus Atlanticus, but more commonly known as a blue dragon. A lot of people have compared them to looking like a real life Pokemon. Personally, I think they look like if God tried AI generating an animal, but they're actually a kind of nudibranch or sea slug. Now, with their bright blue coloration, you might think that this is a form of, I think it's called a posmatism. This is where an animal essentially advertises the fact to predators that, you know, it is dangerous in some way. Typically poisonous, you know, think like a poison dart frog with their bright colorations. But for these guys, it's believed to actually be more of a camouflage. They float on the ocean surface, which obviously, you know, from the top is blue. But from the underneath, with the light reflecting through it, it is this kind of silvery color, which is like the underside. In this way, it kind of makes sense because fish are more attracted to brightly colored things. You know, think of fishing lures. But all this being said, the blue dragon actually is toxic. They primarily feed on the man of war jellyfish, which in Australia is more commonly known as the blue bottle. And when they do this, they actually like collect the venom and they store it in the tips of their little sluggy hands. And they can sting, they can administer this to anything they come into contact with, which results in a more toxic version of what the sting would have been if you got it from the jellyfish. So they're not likely to kill you, but they are gonna hurt like hell. Only really super dangerous if you get stung by a lot or you have some kind of allergic reaction. So in this way, by far, they are the safest animal we're gonna be talking about today. The excruciating pain can last for a full hour. It's coupled with nausea and vomiting. It feels like just like knives just kind of sticking into you sort of thing. You can see dozens of sting marks on his stomach. This following is from an article with Yahoo News. This is the third time Julian says he's been hospitalized from Blue Dragon stinks, but he continues to be fascinated with them. However, he thinks it's super important for his loyal followers to realize that they should not emulate this on-camera behavior. Julian says he was made to rest in the hospital overnight. It's the worst thing I've had. I was being pretty stupid. Uh, now I agree with him. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that, man. Uh, but in saying that, he knew the risks, he was rescuing the little dudes, and at the end of the day, he really only put himself in danger, not other people. Obviously, form your own opinions about this, but I don't think this is even remotely comparable to the next animals we talk about. Now we're going to be moving on to what is maybe, arguably, the most dangerous animal in the world. Every couple of years in Australia, we hear about a tourist handling one of these without knowing exactly what it was. Ask him if he wants fruit. He doesn't like the fruit. <laughs> Eat the fruit. It might be bad because it's citrus. You don't. I know. Let me give him some water. gave it to him. Just put that to your ear. Yeah, I just wanted to see if he was saying anything. <laughs> now, if you know what this was, you are really cringing right now because that was a blue ringed octopus. This guy is pretty common in rock pools from Australia to Japan, and they are maybe the most toxic animal in the world. They're up there with animals like, you know, the box jellyfish and the inland taipan, except I think this one is more innocuous. Is that the right word? They're really small. The ones in these videos, they're not babies. This is actually the full size. And while the previous animal didn't exactly align with aposmatism, this absolutely does. The blue ringed octopus is kind of this basic coloration. However, when it is aggravated or, you know, mildly bothered, it flares up these bright blue rings on itself as a warning. They're generally really chill. That's why you hear a lot about tourists handling them but not a lot getting bit. And if you were to get bit, I don't want to get into the specifics of what happens exactly because, you know, looking here, it's pretty grim. The toxin's actually generated by kind of a symbiotic relationship with a strain of bacteria. And some studies have said that it is 1,000 times more toxic than cyanide. Other studies have suggested that it has the toxicity to take out 26 humans. It takes about 30 minutes for the toxin to do you in, and there's absolutely no antidote. But that's kind of what I meant when I said that it was maybe the most dangerous animal in the world. So yeah, a little PSA, if you're coming to Australia and you see an octopus, don't pick it up. I don't know if there's much harm just looking at it. Just don't touch it. The toxins also disperse throughout their entire body. So if you were to eat one of these guys, it also wouldn't work out for you. This is one of the animals that would rather just hide from you rather than come after you. So this next animal, I would say, is the only iconic Australian animal that we're going to be looking at today. That may come as a surprise, but it'll make a little more sense later on. And it's not the kangaroo. It's not the emu. It's not the dingo. It's the koala. Oh. 
That's right, even the most notorious chillers on the planet have that dog in it. For the most part, they are pretty relaxed gamers, but koalas get pretty aggressive with each other over territory. Pretty much any animal that spends its day climbing trees is gonna have massive claws and crazy upper body strength and the koala is no exception. To give an example of how sketchy these guys are, thieves tried to steal one from a zoo back in 2006 to sell for drug money, but the koala ended up beating the shit out of them and it put up too much of a fight so they opted to take a crocodile instead. They had an easier time with a crocodile than a koala. Could he could like, take all of us. Roy, he could take all of us. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you've got a kid, you should not have them near any wild animals. Wild animals can be super unpredictable, and that includes koalas. But at the same time, you know, there's definitely an assumption that koalas are chill dudes. And if you look at the ones in zoos, they absolutely are. Also, as an added bonus for koalas, uh, pretty much all of them have have chlamydia. That's a huge issue going around for them at the moment. Now, I, I found conflicting results whether or not this strain of chlamydia was infectious towards humans. Some websites said it was, some websites said it wasn't. It's probably not, but let's not get close enough to a koala to risk it. But obviously they have other infections that can be transferred if they bite you. One of those infections is not rabies. And that's because we don't have rabies in Australia. We're one of the few rabies-free countries in the world. Whenever someone's now talking about how dangerous Australia is, you can now drop that fun fact on them. That we don't have a disease that can affect any mammal with a bite, which has an 100% mortality rate if left untreated. Rabies sketches me out so much, man. That freaks me the hell out. If you see a koala in the wild, first of all, l lucky you. Probably don't touch it and you'll be fine. Uh, probably don't put it in claw and distance of your kid. Now here we are leaving the territory of animals that I think you could safely handle. What I mean here is that these are animals that you could theoretically pick up and be fine. Theoretically, but don't do it. This video is about why it was a bad idea to do that, so don't do that. In my opinion, this it, this is the craziest video that we're going to be looking at because I can in no way relate to this. This dude is getting in the way of me going to the bar. And he's really scary. Please don't come this way. I don't like this. The bar is that way. Please move. Please move. Come on. Oh, f me. No! <laughs> Large apes are like my biggest fear in the world. That could never be me. I don't think I need to explain why a baboon is dangerous and why giving off any kind of aggressive display to, to get to a bar was a good idea. Probably just leave. Probably just leave. The bar can wait. Don't threaten it. Just leave. It's fine. Order room service. When you see this next animal, you might be thinking Hakuna Matata. But if you see one in real life, you should be having a lot of Matatas. Check this out. Warthog. He's going to come up the steps. He's going to come up the steps. Here he comes. Oh my goodness, and he's huge. Hello, boy. I wonder if we can pat him. Hi, boy. Can we touch him? No, don't. Help me! Help! What we saw in that clip was a warthog. Warthogs are a prey animal for lions, cheetahs, crocodiles, hyenas, leopards, any major predator in, in Africa will eat these guys. Their main defense is running away. I believe they have the longest legs out of any pig species. And they're runners, they're track stars, they're going at 48 kilometers an hour. Also, as pig species generally are, they are extremely intelligent. But when you're the tastiest morsel in Africa, you gotta know how to fight back. Now, they use their face as a shovel to dig through the ground and if you're like me and you've tried to also use your face as a shovel you would know that the ground is really bloody hard. Males can get up to 150 kilograms so you can imagine at the velocities they're moving they're moving at speeds that can break bone. Also from the way the warthog's tusks are positioned every time they open and close their mouths they're grinding their tusks together sharpening them. There's documented cases of them using these teeth to kill leopards and cheetahs. Yeah, I think we can say in this situation that the warthog probably didn't want this guy to pat it. We gotta remember, there's no situation in the wild where a warthog would be pat by another creature 
every day they're fighting for their survival. Feels stupid to say, but this guy thought it wanted a pat. Maybe other people out there would think that too. So yeah, in conclusion, if you see a warthog, just stay away from that guy. And this kind of goes for all wild pigs. Here's a situation of a guy who tried walking past a wild boar that was in the ocean. You should never corner an animal and I know that the ocean isn't exactly a corner. It's the biggest thing in the world, but you know what I mean. So of course it was going to charge the guy. There's no surprise here. Big pigs are dangerous, man. They killed the guy from Game of Thrones. This is where we're leaving the territory of animals that you could maybe beat in a fight. And I know saying that, it's a bit of a stretch. It's, it's a big maybe. Realistically, none of us are beating a full-sized wild pig or a full-sized baboon in a fight. The ones in the videos, you know, maybe, maybe if they went, you know, hog wild on us, we'd have a chance at survival. From here on out, I would say that the power scaling ramps up a bit. You know, maybe you built different though. Maybe you could take one of these next animals in a fight. I don't know. I would advise against finding out. If you reckon you could take any of these future animals in a fight, just let, let me know, I guess. Let's move on to one of our more controversial animals maybe Yeah, so for this, we're going to lump seals and sea lions into the same category here. They're similar enough, okay? They've got very similar traits. This video is crazy to me. This is, this is truly encapsulating the experience we're looking at today. Just get the hell out of there. Don't walk, man. Leave. Just run. The fact so many people are blocking the stairs. Get out of the way. Don't you know how dangerous these guys are? Well, they probably don't, and they should watch this video. Seal attacks are pretty rare. But also, you know, hanging out with the seals also pretty rare, so take that into consideration. In the ocean, they're more known to be uh, more of a curious animal. Uh, as they come on land, they become a lot more aggressive and a lot more territorial. You can see in this video that they get a little too close to the land. This is not a good situation to be in. Obviously, seals are going to be a much stronger swimmer than you. In the ocean, they can also hurt you accidentally because they weigh so much more than you. The largest sea lions get to about a ton in weight, and then the largest seals, which are elephant seals, get to four tons in weight. Obviously, the seals in the video are not elephant seals. That'll be Neil the seal one day, hopefully. Last year, there was a pretty notable seal attack on a person, and they believed it was caused by a toxic algae bloom that caused some kind of neurological issue in the seal. The toxic algae bloom being caused by warming ocean temperatures. Also, if you get bitten by a seal, you can cop a disease called seal finger. A lot of the time, if you catch this disease, it can result in amputation. Seal teeth in general are razor sharp, you know. Of course, they are. They eat and fish all day, and they can turn their head almost completely around in their blubbery skin so even if you're behind them they can just whip around and bite you I have officially oh, there's no situation where you should approach a seal obviously if they approach you that's one thing and then if you're on land you know, they're going to be a lot slower. You can pretty comfortably enjoy a seal from a distance with, without any dramas. Even if you see a seal in trouble, you're trying to help it, uh, call a professional, don't try and help it yourself. This next animal is an animal you've maybe never heard of. Before making this video, I barely knew of its existence, so I was surprised to find not just one, but two videos of people getting attacked by them. <laughs> Uh-huh. I'd throw it out there. Why did he do that? Ooh, we don't want that on tape. <laughs> this animal is a greater kudu. I love this video. This woman's sheer shock that this wild animal pushed her over and just the dude's lack of reaction. You could tell that he absolutely called this was going to happen beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> is it? <laughs> You can tell with this dude, his, his knowledge of wild animals comes exclusively from the film Jurassic World, watching Chris Pratt hold back the dinosaurs. So yeah, th this is the great Akudu. It's a big bloody antelope. It's not the biggest antelope, that is the giant Elland. I hope I said that right. And while they're not the largest antelope, these guys do have the largest horns out of any antelope. They can get up to 180 centimeters long, so just over the height of a short king. These horns aren't just for show, obviously, although typically they're more used for 
males to interlock and they more push each other rather than stab. These horns are pretty gnarly. The dude in this video ends up getting pretty scratched up from them. From what I've been able to find of them on the internet, they're pretty known for being pretty chill. So again, I'm pretty surprised that there were two clips of this animal. I think this really goes to show that you should never come between an animal and food. Even if you're giving the animal food, it will never interpret that as charity. Charity doesn't exist in the wild. You're gonna interact with that like you are withholding food, even if your intentions are good. As of any animal this size, they're gonna be able to kick you with the strength to break bones. Now, from what I've read, kudus are susceptible to rabies and they interact with people a lot more when they have rabies. So maybe potentially the ones in these clips had rabies. That's pure speculation. That's just my fear of rabies talking. Why anyone would go near an animal with massive knives on its head is truly beyond me. Welcome to Yellowstone National Park. Located in the United States is Yellowstone National Park, which is home to a wide variety of large mammals like bear, bison, a bighorn sheep, elk, you name it. It's famous all over the world. It's also super important for these species. The US has a pretty brutal history regarding its wildlife. For example, bison, which were widespread throughout the country, now are kind of living in these tiny little pockets. One of those pockets being Yellowstone National Park. The Yellowstone herd itself has been hugely important in raising the number of these animals. But for some people, it's also the biggest petting zoo on earth. Most these clips we're going to be looking at I found on an Instagram page called Tourons of Yellowstone. Tourons being the clever mashup of the words tourist and moron. For our first animal of Yellowstone, we're going to be looking at the elk. The poor animal is trying to eat and this Everybody. crazy psychopath. Oh my god, look at the look at it now. Mom, 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 mom. <laughs> I think the beauty of modern technology is the zoom feature that we all have on our cameras. I don't know why people gotta get so close to these guys. So elk typically range between 170 kilograms to uh, close to 500 kilograms. For scale, Australia's largest mammal gets to 55 to 90 kilograms. That's the red kangaroo, but also to be fair, they essentially have no predators. Elk have tons of predators from bears to wolves to mountain lions. So they're adapted to be larger. There's too many people out there who think that herbivore eats equals nice and friendly when it actually means survivor. Their massive antlers are made of pure bone. They are most aggressive in rutting season and calving season. They're known to become very aggressive and more unpredictable. But I think regardless, any time of the year, you know, stay away from that guy. Apparently the best thing to do if you are getting chased by an elk is to run away and hide behind a solid object like a tree. You could also try and make yourself look bigger to intimidate them. You know, but I think if it's me, I'm not going to risk that. I'm, I'm going to run. The Yellowstone advises for all elk and bison and similar animals. So you stay 25 yards, which is like, you know, 23 meters away. This is the kind of animal that you shouldn't even approach in a car if you care about your car in any way. It happened! Guys, it happened! Go! It's an old saying with bears. If it's brown, stay down. If it's black, fight back. If it's white, uh, you're already dead. You should have not gone near that bear. Although black bears are the most timid of the animals, doesn't mean that they don't pose any kind of danger. They absolutely do. I'm probably not going to sit here and explain to you the dangers of a bear. I think that's one of the animals we should already know about. What I think is more important to talk about here is the dangers that we pose to them. When these bears become too close to people, it, typically this is when food is involved and they become too comfortable with people. National parks have to put them down. This is for guest safety. As we talked about earlier, what animals are like with food and they can just kind of become aggressive at any time. You don't want an animal being comfortable with people. They need to have that kind of fear to also stay away from us. So when we see animals in clips like this, which are obviously very comfortable with people, we can kind of tell that maybe they've been fed and that probably at this point, you know, as sad as it is, they have been or will be put down. It's a very sad thing. I was reading about a situation that recently happened with a bison calf. It seems like people felt a need to rescue it from a situation, so they ended up putting it in their car and taking it to a place but eventually this calf had to be put down because there was no hope of reintegrating it with the bison. It was kind of forever stuck in this state where it would be too comfortable with people. So when we interact with some wild animals, specifically these larger mammals, a lot of the time in, in places like this, there's more danger to the animal than there is to us. Hi, I'm your friend. Do you mind if I ride you? Can I ride you? <gasps> I just want to pet you. Can I pet you? Can I pet you? 
You're not very friendly. Bison are one of my favorite animals. They're easily in the top five. I've never seen a real one though, because yeah, I, I live here. That being said, I don't think I'd ever go near a real one. They weigh over a ton and are the largest mammal in North America. And they are statistically the most dangerous animal in Yellowstone. They can also run up to 70 kilometers an hour, which is also the same as 45 miles an hour. And they are the ones with by far the most clips of people interacting with them. With a lot of the animals we've talked about today, I kind of get why people went up to them. With, with anything in Yellowstone, I just do not understand at all. They're as big as a car. Stay, stay away from that guy. Also, it is illegal to feed, entice, or disturb any wildlife in the national park. Violators may be charged, required to appear in court, and pay up to fines of $25,000. That's enough to get me to not do it. That is, that's a lot of money, man. That's too much money, even if you don't care about your own safety. Surely that's enough to deter you. All right, we're moving on to what is the tallest animal in the US, and that is, of course, the moose. Scared and trampling you. Is it, is it your moose? <laughs> it's not my moose, but it's a goddamn wild animal. Get the f away from it, you idiots. Dumbest people I've ever, I've ever met in my life. <laughs> Go ahead, touch it. Go ahead, try. Go ahead, try. See what happens. Get the f away from the moose. Oh, oh, no. Oh, 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 closer. Get the moose down. A little closer. Go on. You guys are fing idiots. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Get him. Yeah, get him. Yes. Get him. Get him. This video feels like a sketch. This feels like it, it was not real. More people are attacked by moose than bears every year. More people are killed by bears, but still, a moose is gonna mess you up. Their antlers are six foot. That's so much taller than a short king. At this point in the video, I think if you don't understand why approaching an animal with massive antlers is a bad idea, uh, I don't know if this was the video for you, and I apologize. I'm sorry for wasting your time. And that's about it. I can't think of an animal any bigger than a moose that anyone would even fathom going near. You know, that'd be crazy to go near any animal that's bigger than a moose. Oh, that's a boy. Oh, that's a... <laughs> What's up, buddy? How cool is he? <laughs> Just give the elephant the banana. Just give it the banana. What are you doing? Don't do that. Give it the give it the banana. This is one of those things. There's so many clips out there of people interacting with elephants in safer ways. It looks like from this video, this person unintentionally was taunting the animal with the banana. I don't even think they realized they were doing it, but but they did. If you see an elephant in the wild, stay away from that guy. I love nature. I think it's to be explored, but it is also to be respected. If you want to experience animals up close, there are proper channels to do that. If you're really interested in seeing a specific animal in the wild, take the time to learn about them. And if you're not that interested in it in the first place, maybe don't go near it. For the most part in these videos, I don't think what was going on was that deep. I think it's people being dumb and making mistakes. Or some people, they were probably put in a situation where they didn't expect to interact with an animal that day. That Yellowstone stuff was crazy dumb though. What, what, what the heck? But I think we can safely say if we talk to any of the people from any of these videos, they would admit that what they did was pretty stupid. Uh, th thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope this video didn't feel too mean-spirited. I'm working on two videos. I'm hoping one's next week, one's a week after, both in front of the green screen. We're getting our ankles in it. Subscribe. I'll see you then.